Hello and goodbye tonight to a couple of friends of mine, John and Katrina Bedeen, who are partying with a lot of Bradley and MDD fans in Peoria at the home of a prominent attorney. They are going to St. Louis, transferred out. They will miss Bradley basketball. We will miss them. This game is for them tonight. All-time series, Bradley 42 to 30 on top. It began in 46-47. There have been some great ones. Everybody stands until Wichita scores. A couple of years ago, they stood for 10 minutes. Hope you enjoy Bradley and Wichita State as Xavier McDaniel trips easily to Aubrey Sherrod. Bradley opens in a 2-3 zone, the same one we saw the other night in Tulsa. Right hand side is McDaniel. Now Sherrod, it's Mike Arline. Ali oops, and missed it. Rebound Mordini. And Bruce gets the first for Bradley. Let's see what they look against. Joe, it's man-to-man, -man, isn't it? Right hand side left, looks at Winters. Good job of cutting him down by Coleman. And now it's Mordini on the right. The band plays, the crowd cheers as Les looks left. Up top it's Winters. Coleman right in his face. There's Hawkins, he fires the first one, missed it. Rebound long, tip. Donald Powell goes, saves into Hawk's hands. It's tipped away, and the Sox are running into front court. All the way down, firing up an off-balance shot is our line. It's tipped up no good by McDaniel. Outlet pass, here comes Boise. If he gets it in, and he lays it, missed it. And he comes out of bounds, and we miss our first two shots. As Boise missed the layup, but a pretty good play defensively by Wichita getting back, and we're still scoreless at 19 on oh, Boise was worried about that. He took back, he looked back twice, and lost his rhythm on it. He was going to, to jam it, set up for the layup, and missed it. Our line threw up an off-balance shot at the other end. Here's Coleman on the left. Picked up in that wing of the zone by Les and Mordini. Now entry pass, it's Carr, Coleman. Played over a minute. Here's McDaniel. Put it on the floor once. There's Coleman. Go to the baseline. He stopped there. Steal by Jim Lett. So the Sox turn it over. Here's Jimmy on the right-hand side in the wing there. Now looks to the left. Looks at Mordini. Let's see Hawkins, who missed the first shot for Bradley, has it on the wing and the right. Up top, Mordini looks at inside at Donald Powell, who gets out of the lane. Now Bruce taking it to the right-hand side with swipe that by McDaniel. 26 seconds on the shot clock as Les has it. He's looking inside at Donald Powell. Now gives it to it. Back to Jim. There's Mordini. His shot from the corner left is bouncing no. Rebound is taken away by Carr, and he fouls. On the board, it's Donald Powell. Who'd they call it on? They call it on Powell? I think they did right on the rebound try. 18-19 to play. The Bradley offense is a bit sluggish. Well, you know, you got to go to Winters. He's being guarded by the smaller Coleman. you got to post him up, get him in the ball. If you got a quick position, he and Mordini got to give him the ball inside. Wanted to watch the first five minutes to see how it went to get the crowd out of the game, perhaps. And that's why we have no score, and we're coming up on two minutes gone. The rod right-hand side with Hawk on him. Now, Henry Carr, take a dribble inside, there's X, there's two. Well, sit down, he gets it there, you can put it in your book. Two minutes gone, two nothing shocks. Jim West with our line on him. Jim with the right hand, dribble across the timeline. A look for Winters, who comes down on the right hand side and fires a jumper long. Rebound, weak side board is Carr, and a push off is on Carr. He pushed off on Mordini, and Bradley hasn't got a shot yet. We're over for the game. Boise a little too, uh, a little too quick that time. Want to fire it out, trying to make up for that layup. But he's the guy who got to go too early. First five minutes, Dave, was important to get the crowd and the emotions out of the game. 17:47 to play in the first half. Here's Mordini on the inbounds. Bradley going to run a high-low stack this time. As Dick Versace to our left, we're courtside. Bradley moves from left to right here in the first half. Here's last entry pass. It's cut down beautifully by McDaniel. And he then walked. He dribbled it on the line, they said. I didn't see him dribble it on the line, but evidently he did, and they turned it over again. So the Shocks are trying to help us out with 17.34 for the first half. They've lost six times in this building, David. We've lost five times at home. They lost to Chicago State here. And Pepperdine, and Tulsa, and Illinois State, and Mordini at the L. Tried to get the pass in. It's knocked away by Sherrod. This is not a team that plays a whole lot of defense, and they're looking like... Uh, the Pentagon here early, 17-27 to play first half, less than the inbound pass, and Bradley going to run 53. So they line up in it now, and Donald Powell comes out left, but left to the hash mark on the right. There's Winters, he's two-time there, and the ball is taken away by Sherrod, and he's running in the left-hand side. Put it on the floor between the legs. They'll look at our line up front. So Bradley going to go three minutes without a score. Here's Sherrod, looks for the entry pass to McDaniel. He's covered up, and our line has it out front. 30 seconds on the shot clock is Sherrod. In and out, rebound X, he's up and down for two. 
Well, McDaniel's weak side board. He's right there. It's 4-0 Wichita. If you front McDaniel, he's got the inside rebounding position. If you don't front him, he can get the ball easily in the pivot. He's hard to guard. We need a field goal. Here's Boise, and he's fouled by Coleman out front of Elding. Second Wichita foul. First down Coleman at 16-41. Well, he's having a hard time getting the ball inside, David, and uh, Bruce Mordini looks like just a little hesitant to do anything with the ball right now. He's got to loosen up a little bit. We haven't mentioned the fact that Mike Williams has not started. I guess I didn't want to make too big a thing of that, but it is a big thing. It's the first game he has not started all year. Here's Les with the ball between the rings. Now looks at Donald Powell. Hawk goes in the corner on the left. He stops, fires it up, missed it. Rebound in, in the lane. Winners pops it up, missed it. He'll go to the line for two. As Carr fouled it. Well, we got a break. As Carr picked up his second foul, and the third team foul is 16 and a half, and winners will have a chance to get us on the board, and we're awful fortunate right now. That's right. Awful fortunate just to be two baskets down with a man at the free throw line. Henry Carr, two quick fouls. They have really depend on him since Gus Santos is out for the year with a stretch fracture. 75%. Boise misses the first one. Nothing going right. We don't look as sharp as he did the other night. Of course, that was nearly a perfect game for the gang. It's now four to nothing still as he misses a pair. He's now missed four in a row. He missed two on the one and one the other night. Here comes X. He fires a jumper. It's missing. Rebound tipped by Carr. He's on the back. It won't count. That's his third foul, Joe. And he leaves the game most likely at 16-23. And here comes Carl Pepke in replacing Carr. And that was a big, big break. First of all, I thought that the extra shot was going in. When it didn't, Carr, who didn't use a great deal of brains with two fouls, climbed on the back. Now, very aggressive. They like to go to the boards, especially with X. They paid the price that time. All right, here comes left behind the back, trying to beat our line. Looks at a screen from Donald Powell. There's Winters. He needs to get his first one in. He fires it up, and there it is off the glass. And Jim Les looks at Dick Versace and says, what offense are we running? I think that was a pretty good play. Get it to Winters. Right. Left side. Coming back in a 2-3. Brace to go to their first field goal. And almost four minutes gone. So now Papke, here's penetration by Arline, drops it right in the hands of Winters. Outlet pass at the other end. Here comes the Hawk with Sherrod around him. Kaboom! Hersey Hawkins from Winters, and we're even at four. Bradley snowballing a little bit here, or snowboarding rather, getting that long pass to layup. We release that time with the Hawk. Here's Coleman, left-hand side, a steal by Les. Turnover by the Sox. Jimmy comes down to the right-hand side. Look, inside low post, there's Hawk for two, and it's six straight for the Tomahawk game. Six four, with Carr on the bench with three. And now it's Sherrod. And they're gonna bring Normore in. On the next dead ball, here's Coleman. Up top our line, Coleman again. Mordini with a hand in his face. Jimmy made the steal. Oh, there's a low block on the, on the block on the left. This Papke comes out now. Coleman, our line. They got 23 seconds on the shot clock as Coleman fires it up, and it's good. Ties it. Did a pretty good job defensively that time. Five minutes gone. We're even at six. Got to let him shoot. He's not very good shooter. About 40% on the year. Well, this game is uh, even at six, and we should be down 10. The way the team has started. Oh, there's a shot for Boise on the baseline. He fires it up 15. There's two. Well, it just took him a while to get plugged in, right? 8-6, Braves up two. It's about the situation we were the other day against Tulsa, Joe. Same time. Here's Papke on the right. Looks at Coleman, who goes and runs through the lane. Now drops it up our line. He looks and was fouled by Les, and it wasn't called. Joe, you thought he traveled, right? I thought Les fouled him. Our line penetrate. Kick it off to Sherrod. That's up and good. He has a shot that he likes. Right-hand side. He's never really hurt Bradley that much in dominating a game, but if the Shockers are going to win, he's going to be the, there tonight. Likes to put up with up before dribbling on the wing. He likes to shoot it before bouncing it. 14-08 to play in the first half as Les gets a screen from Mordini, who rolls then, but Jim now has winners left. Now Les looks at Bruce up high, looks at Boise, looks at Powell. Now comes to the right. Next dead ball will have a timeout. Here's Les is fouled, and a foul is on our line as Jim... Move left, and he was held. We're going to have a substitution. Here comes Normore in. Clint Normore out of Wichita East. 6'1", 195, and a freshman, 1.4. And with the score tied at 8, the Braves with the ball. And the Shockers with five team fouls at this point. We'll be back in one. You're listening to Bradley Basketball on WMBD. Your home. You work hard to maintain it and keep it looking good. But take a look at your garage door. Do you see a cracked, split, or deteriorating door that takes away from the total appearance of your home? 
If that's what others see, call Adams Door Company for a replacement door. Ask about a Rainer Decade Door for the strength and durability of steel with all the beauty of wood. The Decade Door from Adams Door Company has a 10-year guarantee. No other garage door company will guarantee your garage door through 1995. Ten years of rain and snow and winter winds that could damage any other door. Adams Door Company offers this guarantee because they use only the best quality materials. They're confident in their doors. When you have Adams Door Company install your new garage door, you get a free door adjustment for proper balance. You not only add beauty to your home, but safety and security for your whole family. Have Adams Door Company add an automatic garage door opener and give your family downright convenience through all kinds of weather. Anytime you go to war, as Gene Smithson would say, you've got to withstand the first barrage. Well, we're in the trenches, Joe, and they've lobbed a couple of grenades. So far, so good. That's right. They've been off just a little bit, and Bradley continues to do a good job on the rebound on the board. They did a good job Thursday night against Tulsa. Did a good job here. You know, got caught out of the game just by boxing out where you should. Mm -hmm. And now they already had a size disadvantage with Normor in at 6-1. They're working with a... Mosquito squadron in there. Five team fouls to Bradley's just one in the first uh, almost six minutes, almost seven minutes of the game. Need a good shot here, Joe, and keep that lead. Here's Les with the ball. Normore on him. Donald Powell in the left. Looks up front to Mordini. There's Les. Entry pass. Nice pass. Winner's up. It's nice slotted away. That should go. And nobody's going to call it. Well, they call it a block. That's his 25th of the year. He leads the team. Mordini inbounds past the last, pretty close. And now here's Les in the lane, drop it down. Donald Powell goes up strong, short. Rebound taken down, who else? McDaniel, his outlet passes to Coleman. Donald just a little too soft for the shot that time. 13-24, Coleman left. They only have two guys that are going to shoot it. Well, now Papke does. So off balance, it goes in and out. Rebound, Hawk on the weak side board. Now to Les. I talked Papke into shooting it, didn't I, Joe? Here's West, and a trade kick it off. Hawk up good! Percy <laughs> gets his, what, third field goal, Joe? Right, six points. He's the high man in the game. He had a slam. He had another one inside, and he got that one. Seven minutes gone. 10-8 Braves still with the lead. Here's Papke inside around Winters. Missed the shot. Percy gets the board. Outlet pass to the Hawk. Don't pick up a charge, Percy. He pulls up off the glass. Missed it. Too hard. Then McDaniel nearly lost it out of bounds. And he gets another rebound. Here comes Normore. A little too hard. Hawk was trying to avoid that charge. Entry pass, Papke. Spit it back out. Normore up front. Looks for the entry pass, McDaniel. Surrounded by three, and Les got him before the shot. On the floor, Jim Les swiped at him, got it. So we're not going to shoot these. That was a pretty good move by Jim at that point. Right. So he's going to score. That's what they did in Peoria a lot, David. They got the ball to McDaniel. Even though he was double, triple team, he put it up, got fouled, or, or, or made the basket very strong inside, very quick off his feet. First on Jim, second team foul. 12-29, Bankson going to come in. Here's Sherrod, gets the ball away from him a little bit now. Normore, Coleman on the baseline. McDaniel smothered. Out Normore. His 18-footer is good. And that's the shot. And if Wichita hits, the Braves are going to be in a little bit of trouble. Because you want him to shoot. Normore only averages, uh, well, he's already over his average with that first field goal. Shooting 33% from the field for the year. I wonder who will come out, Joe, with Bankston coming in. You think they might give Les a rest here? Here's Winters. Ball above his head. Game tied. Just under 12 minutes to go. Boys, they go to the free throw line. He is working. He goes to the baseline, gets a screen, hangs, fires two. Throw move there for Boise Winters as he went through traffic, found a shot, got it in. 12-10, Braves up a deuce again. 11.44 in the clock roll. Normore goes into left. Now Coleman. Normore 20 feet away to Papke. Looks for the drop-down pass. Coleman got a man in the air. Now this one's blocked out of bounds by Donald Powell. That's his first block of the night. Well, I, think it it's a, I think it's the second. He had five against Tulsa the other night, a career high. And we're going to take time. Bankston is in. The Braves have a two-point lead, but will play D when they come back with 11.33 to go in the first half. Back in one, you're listening to Bradley Basketball on WMBD. Come in out of the tax storm at Tallman Home Federal Savings. Tallman offers a wide variety of ways to take refuge from the storm of current taxes. An IRA, for example. The first tax saving step for every wage earner should be opening a Tallman Home individual retirement account because it earns interest tax deferred and you can deduct your contribution from taxable income on your federal tax. 
tax return. Another savings alternative at Tallman Home to cut current taxes is a tax deferred annuity that allows you to defer taxes on the high interest earned until withdrawal. The Tallman Home Annuity is issued by Great Northern Insured Annuity Corporation, Seattle, Washington, and offered through Tallman Home Investments. Also, even more tax advantage products to help you shelter or save on taxes are available through the Invest Center in the downtown Peoria office of Tallman Home Federal Savings. Invest is an independent investment service of ISFA Corporation. So come in out of the tax storm. Get some welcome relief from taxes at one of the eight convenient Central Illinois offices of Tallman Home Federal Savings, member FSLIC, and commit to your financial future. Well, my wife Marsha is back uh, on this trip and she's got X for three rebounds already and Boise with two. I was just saying to you that if we get ahead of this club like we did Tulsa the other night, I think it will be as easy for the Shockers to come back because of oh, that. No, they've had injury problems all year long. They've got experience problems in the backcourt past Sherrod uh, and seeking a rebounding. Hersey Hawkins won on the night trying to become the first freshman since Harold McMath and only the second freshman in Bradley's history to lead the team in rebounding for a year. We're going to watch that closely, so I'm going to be watching Marsha real close. All right. I always do. Here's Coleman going to inbound. And Tim Banks did out of Simeon is in there and replacing Jim Last. Here's Normore loses. Go to the floor. Hawk almost did. We got uh, no fresh shot clock. Here's X in the middle. He loses. Turns it over right in the hands of winners. Let's get a four-point lead here, Joey D. How about it? Get a good shot for Boise on the baseline. Here's Bankston. Penetrate. Tim Bankston. He is a Great America ride in himself. With it, Hawk. Now Bankston, who he nearly walked with it. Now Winters. Drop it down. Right there to the Hawk. On the baseline. Hangs. Fires too hard. Rebound McDaniel. Outlet pass, and here comes Sherrod. 22 against 22, and that's no contest. He flew right around Tim Bankston. That's the first minute against the senior, and you're right, no contest. And so instead of a four-point lead, we're tied again. 10.47 to play. They trap Bankston, and he throws it nearly away. He just throw it away. Got to catch the ball with two hands, David, but more importantly, you got to stop the outlet pass. Every time Mex gets a defensive rebound, the ball's ending up at half court without touching the floor. Here comes the half-court offense for Wichita State as they try to get the lead back. Jim came out of the game, and the Shockers have gone to work. Here's X inside, too. And Wichita's up again, 14 to 12. And here comes Mike Williams for the first time. Mike Williams says he's going in for 24. He just signaled. Well, we'll see how he does, and Les is going to come back in. Here's Bankston's trip. Into the front court running. X with Aubrey. Put it up. And he missed. Rebound Kokic is in there. Kokic. And a foul is on Donald Powell. So with 10.09 to play in the first half, that is Bradley's third team foul. And Powell picked it up and stopped the break. They have checked in Tom Kosic out of Calumet City, the home of the Blues Brothers, 6'10", the real Blues Brothers, 238 sophomore. And that was going to be 2-2, two, two. probably should have been. That's right, they should have made the break, uh, the shot on the break, Dave. We've got a break here and try to play D and get it back. Mike Williams is in, out of De La Salle. McDaniel is up, down, in the middle. Here's a jumper, up good. And X is going to work, and that's Wichita's biggest. Now they had a 4-0 lead, didn't they? Ten minutes gone. Halfway through the first half, Wichita up 16-12. to 12. Needs some patience and a good shot here. Here's Bankston. Kick it off to the Hawks. Now to West. Entry pass is Winters. Now Williams put it up, air ball. Rebound taken down in the hands of Coleman. As well as we played for about six minutes. We're not playing well now. Here's Sherrod, short on the jumper. Rebound left. And he dives into the hands of Bankston. And Tim was lucky to get it. He's down to the other end, flip it up and charge. He needs to come out of the game. Well, out of control, David. Uh, all the way, both ends of the court, he's out of control. I was surprised that uh, when Jimmy came in, you know, Bankston stayed in the game. And now Mordini is going to come in for Bankston with 9.31 to play, and the Shockers have a chance to run two more and make it eight straight. We had a 12-10 uh, lead with the ball, and now it's 16-12. to 12. They're going to go to McDaniel again. Why? Right. Uh, wouldn't you? Sure I would. It's a 2-3 zone. Here's Papke. McDaniel up top. He rolls down low. Here's Normore. Papke. Left goes to the floor. He's dropping back on X. Papke with it. Up top it's Kosich. Looks for the drop down pass. Top of the key. 25 seconds on the shot clock. McDaniel. Winners on him. Looks for a lob inside Kosich. He's pushed by Williams. No call. Jumper is up and good. 
and put in by Clint Norborn. We're in trouble now. Nine minutes to go in the half, and the Braves are down six. No trouble, just need a basket here. Got to go back to Voicey. Here's Wes across the timeline. Up top, Mike Williams, who missed his first shot. Mordini looked. They looked to the left. They cut down the pass. Williams put it on the floor, and the offense becomes further and further away from the goal. Here's Wes. The right-hand side. Looks at Mordini. Has it in the corner on the right. Finds Winters. Boise was pumped. Now he's trapped. He walks. And the pass is spiked out, and Mordini picks up the foul. That's five team fouls. We just don't have any idea offensively what's going on, but Boise with Tomahawk is right at the other end. Double team in the corner, and uh, uh, we're, we're missing something right now. First four, D didn't run the offense, and all he did was getting it away on that sequence. 8.31 to play. Victor Zace gets out of the coaching box, Joe. He was on the floor talking to Mordini. Eight and a half to go. Shockers could go up eight here. Here's Papke. Fires it up. It's in and out. Me rebound McDaniel. Taken away by Mike Williams. That doesn't happen often. Here comes West running the floor. Need a field goal here. Jim to the right, to the left. And now Boise pull up. 18-footer is good. And that's just what the doctor ordered. 18-14. Eight points for Boise. And here comes Normore. Percy Hawkins yelling at Pee Wee Summers down to the right. They're going to get another substitution in here, Joe. Here's a pass. Hawk intercept. On the turnover. Here you go. Wind it up. Kaboom. Hawk right, gets the field goal, and the Braves are within two again. The Shockers look like they were sharp for a moment. Hawkins says eight. Winner says eight. That adds to 16. We're down two. Yep. All right. The crowd's getting in it again. A little basketball up top. Is Normore now Papke back to Normore. Kosich inside, they don't see him. There's Sherrod, left-hand side is good. Aubrey Sherrod, you want to take in that shot. 20 to 16. And less across the timeline. He goes around Normore. He can't handle Jim. There. Crowd wanted to walk. Left up top. He takes a 22-footer. Good! Jim West with the goal. The, the crowd back down. Our line going to come back in. It's 7.06 to go in the first half. Bradley down two. Jim's tired. I'm surprised they haven't got to X every time down. There's a skip pass to Rod. He fires it up. He had missed that one. Mordini with the board. Flip it out to left. Bray's got a mini break going. Ali Oop the other end. Now coming back out as winners. Turned it over. No call, Pee Wee Summers says. And now they call a foul on the shot. Well, Boise is getting ready for the NBA on every game, I tell you. You can travel in that league. You can double, you can double dribble. He's doing it all tonight. He bounced that ball about as high as the wheat shocker. And with that foul, Bradley in a one and bonus, Joe. But I think this will be two for winners. He'll try to tie it here. Who's the foul on? It's on the X. That's number one. Well, there's one thing for sure tonight. He won't foul out. Going foul out of three games all year, David, and uh, he's a smart player with foul trouble. Boise's first one's in and out. That's three in a row tonight and two the other night. He can get Bradley within one. He'll make this one. Put this down on your WMBD scorecard. It'll be 20 to 19. And we'll have time. As he hits the free throw, 6.48 to play. First half, Shockers 20, Bradley 19, but we're not really taking advantage of the fact that Carr has those three fouls. We're back in one. You're listening to Bradley Basketball on WMBD. Pam, look at this. The stock I've been watching has nearly doubled. I wish we had the money to invest in it. Nick, put down that paper and listen. I've got an investment for you that we can't afford not to make. Well, you got my attention. Today at work, we got this mailing from Fritch Heating and Cooling. Right. It explains the Home Energy Loan Program called HELP. Mm -hmm. It's a government program which provides money for home energy improvements. We could get that new energy-efficient Lennox furnace from Fritch that we so desperately need and get as much as $1,250 refunded from the government. Say. Our monthly payments would be low. We could use the interest of the tax deduction and we'll start saving money on fuel bills right away. Everything considered, our return on investment could be as high as 200%. Uh, but would we qualify for the government help funds? 80% of Peoria homeowners qualify, and a Lennox furnace from Fritch Heating and Cooling is definitely the best value around. Sounds good. Let's call Fritch and have them show us how the Home Energy Loan Program could make money for us. The government funds are limited, so I'll call today. Good idea. Invest in your home. Call Fritch Heating and Cooling in Peoria today. Bradley basketball this year and years to come. We're coming up on uh, the end of the season, and then we'll have the games next year, of course, exclusively. We're happy about that on WMBD Peoria, someplace special. 
you know, just if you needed one more item to talk about how great Xavier McDaniel is, here it is. Bradley owns a considerable size advantage on the floor, yet we're not going man-to-man -man defensively because of his presence on the floor and what he could do to a man-to-man -man defense. Dosage uh, still in there. I'm surprised the amount of time he's got, but he's taking Henry Carr's place. The average is 3.2 um, minutes a game. He hasn't really done much while he's in there, but he's now staying in. Now right in front of us, Joe. All right, they're going to get Sherrod out of there. Now they're having a... We're trying to get in on this. Let's see if we can get in on this. And they're talking to Bailey Summers, and they're talking to the assistant coach. He can't come in unless time has run off the clock, and the officials are convinced that he checked in. Crowd telling Dick to sit down. Now they're going to get Kosich or Papke back in. They right, stuck to their gun. So Papke's still in. So as soon as the uh, next dead ball, then Sherrod will come back in. Of course, they'd like to have him now in their office. All right, well, Sherrod will keep check in at the uh, next set ball. Bradley in their 2 3 zone with 6.42 to play in a half. And the crowd getting into it now. Again, Kosich now our line. There's those two gold sweatbands about midway on his forearm. Here's Papke. With it now, Coleman. Back out to Carl Papke. Shot clock reads 24. Coleman with it. Looks inside X. Gets free. It's blocked. And a foul on winners. The two free throws coming up here for McDaniel. Well, they call Boise with the foul. That was, that, was, that was a good play, David. It really was. He went up strong and made McDaniel double pump, which uh, drew the foul, if you want to call it that. X is 65% from the line, so you're right. He was going to hit a shot inside most likely, and 65% is not anything to write home about. Their team only shoots 61% for the year. But yeah. Oh, that could be a key later on. You know, Carr shoots 41. As he misses, Carr shoots 41, our line 46, Papke is under 60, Coleman's under 54. They'll try to give him a two-point lead. With this team, you've got to check out on rebounds because they miss so many free throws. The second one is nothing but net, and our line will look to pick up some pressure. They're going to pressure on to make. Left looks to the inbounds pass, and he barely makes it in time to Boise Winters, who helps out. So we escape that bullet. Bradley trying to tie. 21-19, Wichita State. Ray's biggest lead's been four. Wichita's biggest lead's been six. Here's Williams inside. Kosich can't guard him, but he misses a shot. Mike just missed the shot. Out on the break. Here comes Sherrod. Here comes McDaniel. Spins away. And now look. Kosich. Kick it back out. Left kicked it away. David, you got to use the board. Down that low on the block. you got to use the board. Mike likes to shoot it in straight, and it's a difficult shot that way. He's 0 for 2. Papke going to come in, and Kosich will come out. So they got Papke, Arline, Cedric Coleman. They have the original starting five with the exception of Papke for Henry Carr, who's still got the three fouls. 5.52 to play first half. Coleman, Arline takes the step, doesn't take the 18-footer. Sherrod is covered up there. Papke is three-timed, and he'll come back out. Wichita going for a four-point lead here. Where's McDaniel? He's down on the block left. And with it now is Sherrod. Now up front, Normore, or make it uh, Coleman. They wanted to alley-oop. They had it open to Sherrod, but they didn't want to go that way. 14 on the shot clock. Here's Sherrod, left wing, up top, our line, penetrates, goes in, surrounded, stolen, turnover, left has it. Bradley tried to tie here. There's Boise on the left wing. Let's see if Jim gets it to it. He didn't in time. Now up front, left, left-hand side, and a traveling call on Hawkins. You get away with that one in the NBA, that's for sure. That was much. Normore will come back in as they continue to shuffle. It looked like uh, our line may have sprained an ankle there. Well, Wichita used a lot of time on the clock the last time trying to get that four-point lead. Didn't get it done. Didn't get a shot. Here's Coleman. Takes the shot. Papke up high. Looks to kick it back out. Now drop it down left. Entry pass in and out of the hands. X get it back on the baseline. I think Boise fouled him. Well, they call it on Mordini. So it'll be one in bonus time for McDaniel. Too bad, Joe. Looked like uh, 
We might have got a steal there. Right. There's one of those loose balls here talking about Thursday night. You got to get their, your share. That's 17 foul. So it'll be one bonus for McDaniel. You'll never have a chance to get their four-point lead. As Jim was coming to front court, Boise was all alone on the left wing. I thought that he might make the pass, but didn't. Well, that was against the, uh, the grain with everyone between Jimmy and Boise. That would have been a tough pass. You're right. And he's smarter than I am. One in bonus. McDaniel hit one of two last trip on a two-shotter. His first one's up, and it's in. 22-19. Well, he needs seven for 2,000 now. They're going to give him the ball? I don't know if that's been planned or not. They're going to give him his uniform, that's for sure. Second free throw is bouncing. No, the rebound in the hands of Williams from Winters. So, Boise will get the board, and Les will have the ball. Bradley tried to cut the lead to one here. Still in it, Les left-hand side. Looks to get a screen from Hawk, who now exchanges position, goes up top. Percy right-hand side, Mordini. Looks at Williams down low. He spins away from McDaniel. Get it to him. He's, he's posted inside, and it throws it to Les, who saves everybody. Downstairs is Hawkins. He's fouled before the shot. Oh, no. Looks like he was bumped, Dave. He got a body check that time. Well, if this is going to be a physical game, if they're going to let that go, it should be to Bradley's advantage. We have a really more physical team. Alley oop. Out of bounds. Turnover, Wichita. Thank you very much. Well, that's twice they tried that, and the only thing they've hit so far is the board. See that? People forget how tough a pass that is when Jim West does it all the time. So here comes West. Bradley's going to run four. What is this going to be, Joe? One four high? Well, whatever it is, Mike Warner. Yeah. Here's Winters. Gets it away to left. Jim around one, around two. Leave it off downstairs. Mordini was fouled. Get it back. And Papke picked it up. Two shots coming up for Mordini with a 22-19 score Wichita. And Bruce is only 4 of 10 on the line for the year. we got to start making some free throws. Boise's missed two already. Well, uh, Bruce Mordini is a good shooter. He's a natural shooter. All he needs is a little more time on the line to make some of those uh, automatic, Dave. Well, he's got a pair here. Try to get Bradley within one. His first one's up and in. A lot of English on it, but it, it didn't hit any rim to roll off. 22-20. Second one's up. That one's good. He looked good form-wise on both of those. 22-21. Low scoring first half for the Shockers. They average 77 a game. Here's Normore. Jump pass out of Coleman. Sherrod, entry pass. Williams, fly swats it away, and Les fouled him. Was not called. In the lane, a shot Orbor and a tip in by McDaniel. They got a big break there. Both teams, because Bradley should have had Jim West with a foul, Joe. Right. 24-21. 3.43 behind the back, Jim. Back to the four corners. Les looks to get away from Sherrod and Normore, but can't do it. Now Williams up high. Looks to kick it down to Boise. Here's Les penetrates, gives it to Hawk. Kick it up back and throws it away, but Les goes and gets it. 23 seconds on the shot clock. 53! 53 is the offense. They'll run with 18 seconds on the shot clock. Mike Williams at the high post. Looks for the drop down pass. Boise on the baseline. That looks good. It's in and out. Rebound taken down Pepsi. Kick the outlet pass. Turnover. Les all the way to Williams. Come on! What a pass by Jim West. And the Shocker fans on him a little bit. That was a poor pass and turned it right back over. Thank you very much. Three minutes to go in the first half. Here's Coleman. His jumper is up. And bounces off. Boise on the weak side board. Get it out. Does the left. Mordini running on one wing. Hawk on the other. Hawk. Baseline jumper left. It's good! And Bradley's back out in front. 25-24. 10 points for the Hawk. That steal, by the way, give it credit to Hersey who knocked it out from behind. 2.43 for the half and the 2-3 zone is there. Where's McDaniel? They're going to go to him this time. There he is. He turned around jumper in. Like a sieve. 26-25. At 14 for him. He's three for 2,000. Two and a half and the clock continues to roll. Bradley try to get the lead back here. Team's going back and forth. Last up top, Mike Williams. To the corner is Hawkins. Takes a couple of dribbles, now comes back out. Where's left? They look for a cross court. Mordini has it now. Jim, ooh, he could have beat him to the baseline, but didn't go. Now Boise's posting down low. Hawk has it going out of his hand. 20 seconds on the shot clock. will reload here. There's a drop down pass. Mordini from Williams. Up top is West. Penetrates in the lane. It's partially blocked. Rebound McDaniel. And the ball is thrown in the front court on the two-on-one. Sherrod will lay it up and get it. Oh, my goodness. Jimmy fouled him and it'll go. They might get two shots here. That might be an automatic, uh, I mean, uh, uh, intentional foul. Intentional foul. Count the goal, one shot. 
Well, Jim tried to hold it, but Arbery got it in. 28-25, they could get a four-point lead here. at the second foul on left. That's eight points for Aubrey, and uh, here's a guy that doesn't miss many free throws. He's good at the line, 84%, and a senior to boot. 42 of 51, so you got to figure we're down four here. Free throw is up, and that's good. Here comes the pressure, here comes the timeout. A minute 56 to go in the half. 29 Wichita, 25 Bradley. Back in one, you're listening to Bradley Basketball on WMBD. Ergonomics. Now this word can be defined as the art and science of designing machinery to be comfortable and efficient for people to use. And every Volvo is engineered with this concept in mind. Solidity, durability, refinement, and safety. Every Volvo owner can take these for granted. And now you too have a great opportunity to take advantage of the Volvo's superb qualities. That's right. At Peoria Toyota Volvo, they're closing out the 1984 inventory of Volvos. It's the greatest selection ever. Over 30 are still in stock, and all at fantastic low, low prices. So hurry on in while the selection is still available. Remember, they've got to clear out 1984 inventory, so prices have been slashed. Hurry on over to Peoria Toyota Volvo. Check out the excellent selection and save. Peoria Toyota Volvo at the top of the hill on Knoxville. Waikiki and Henry Levitt Arena. What do they have in common, Joe? A great wave. They got it going right now in what they nicknamed this place the Roundhouse, so you can imagine what it looks like here in person. They said they could have sold 5,000 more seats for this game tonight. They're all filled. That's right. And Wichita is one of those schools that really wants Bradley to stay in the league because this is a great rivalry. They love to see Coach for and the Braves come in here once a year. Well, we're going to have to talk about what we uh, had at breakfast this morning, Joe. A conversation with uh, the athletic director here at Wichita State, Lou Perkins, who uh, shed some light on the subject on what uh, the Valley is proposing for Bradley and Wichita and, and Creighton to do. I think it's very interesting. They're going to have pressure on the inbounds. Line up 1-4 with a Hawk to inbound to Mordini. And now he'll be trapped. And now he's looking for less, and now Jim has it. Now we got a bit of a break if Jim gets on the scoop. And he cuts the floor and goes to the left. Now come to the right. Looks at Mordini. The bounce pass is there. Give it to Mike Williams. See what he can do this time against X. But Bruce didn't do it. Now he does. Inside Williams. Put it up too hard. Rebound. Williams loses. Last touch by who? Williams. That's just frustrating, David. Frustrating to get the ball to a guy that big on the block, and he can't put it home. They'll get the foul. Now Wichita could go up six with a minute and a half to go. How you play the end of the first half, awfully important. With the basketball is Coleman. Now Papke looks at Sherrod, and he has it 22 feet away. Does it low? Papke, that's a good shot for him. In and out. Rebound winners. He usually hits that shot. Now here's left. Minute 16 to go. Jimmy says four corners. I think that's a pretty good idea, but... Yeah, we got a roll one four is what it is, Joe. Right. Left on the left, looks to the right. Mordini has it. A lob it to Boise. He's posted against Coleman. That's no match. Williams, 26 seconds on the shot clock, a minute to play and a half. Less with the basketball. Jim on the right. Looks at Williams. Up top, Boise. Ali oop to Williams. Put it up. He missed the layup, but was fouled by Papke. And two shots coming up here for Mike with 51 seconds to go. We got a break there. Good ball movement that time. We had Boise posting low. They didn't get it to him because X had the weak side help ready that time. And then we just circled it and got Mike in there and got the ball. Kosich is going to come in. And that Joe D'Alfonso fact book of when Bradley has been at behind at halftime, they have not won all year. Oh for 7. The foul is on McDaniel, his second. He's coming out of the game. That was a break. He would not have come out if he didn't get the foul. So Mike Williams will go to the free throw line, 65%. He needs to get these. Made the first one. That was a big free throw. As Wichita probably burned the clock for one, trying to go up six. Instead now, it could be just two. If Mike can get the throw, got a board on the rebound if there is one. Free throw number two is bouncing. No. Well, we missed a few free throws. 41 on the shot clock, 45 in the game clock. Let's see what the Shockers get here. I'd like him to take a long jumper and have it bounce long and get a layup. How about it? Well, we did that at Oral Roberts the other way. With it now is Normore. Looks up front. They haven't got X to go to, so where's Sherrod? He's on the wing and the right now as Coleman has it. Got to shade Sherrod. He posts in the lane, flip it up and get it. You were saying? 23 seconds to go. Braves are down five. 
And they'll go for one shot here. I would go to Mike inside and try to draw a foul and get a three. 14 seconds, 13. Les looks to the right. Boise bounces out now. He'll post. He's waved the other way. Nine seconds, eight seconds. Les, 20-footer. Good! Jim Les, five seconds, four seconds, three seconds, and the front court is no more. Two seconds, fire off balance. That's short word halftime. Braves are down three, and that's pretty good. At the end of the first half, we'll take it, right? Oh, yeah, got to, especially when you don't score for the first two minutes. 31, Wichita. 28, Bradley. And halftime. Well, I'm wore out. I feel like I play defense out there. We'll take a two-minute break and be back in two minutes with the statistics from the first half. You're listening to Bradley Basketball on WMBD. We make excitement. Showtime has more excitement in February. There's Shirley McLean in the National Pay Table exclusive premiere of Terms of Endearment with Jack Nicholson and Deborah Winger. And Shirley will recreate her Broadway show. It's an evening of song and dance exclusively for you on Showtime. There's more music with Lou Reed and Chaka Khan and Rock of the 80s. And there's movies like Lassiter starring Tom Selleck, Barbara Streisand's Yantel, and Michael Caine in Blame It on Rio. Fairy Tale Theater returns with The Three Little Pigs. And don't forget Family Time every weekday at 4 Eastern, 3 Central with movies, series, and specials for the whole family. John Biner has all new episodes of Bizarre. Plus, Gallagher's back. For all this excitement and more, it's Showtime in February. For the best in entertainment, it's Showtime Movies, Showtime Family Time, Showtime After Hours, Showtime on Broadway, Showtime Video and more. There's something for everyone on Showtime. OUA Cable Systems, not just more choice, your choice. Call 686-2600. Bradley University's partnership with Central Illinois has helped Bradley grow into a quality institution of higher education. A Peoria woman of enormous vision and commitment founded Bradley University in 1897. And Mrs. Lydia Moss Bradley's impact to this day is felt throughout the city and the region. It was also the same Mrs. Bradley who developed what is now the St. Francis Medical Center and who provided the land and the concept for Bradley Park and the Peoria Park system. As one walks through the Bradley campus, the remarkable impact prominent Peoria families have had on the continued growth and development of Bradley University is apparent. The names of the university buildings, Swords, Newmiller, Baker, Morgan, Williams, Geisert, Jobst, Hartman, Ningledine, Jacobs, and Peters are those of caring and sensitive Peoria families who committed their personal interest and resources to make the university a distinguished institution of higher education. There were no held balls in the first half, so Bradley will have possession to open up the second half. Down three, 31 to 28, and it's been close. It's about like it was in Peoria, Joe, the same type of game. Uh, Carr has been no factor except helping us out early with a few fouls. Definitely a game the Braves can win, but uh, it's going to take the same kind of effort, and uh, you got some comments and some scoring in the first half. That's right. You know, the first comment is, uh, would they be three up if Henry Carr had played a lot of the first half? You know, they, they put a lineup in there. Well, they would probably be behind. Well, you know, they, yeah. They, they were pretty effective with the three guards in there and, and Sherrod posting up and getting him to fall in the lane as much as he did. So you never know, you know, what that would bring. But they're definitely a better team with him in there. Whether they would have been denied is... We don't know. Strings are made to be broken, Joe. How about tonight for that halftime? That's that right. 0 for 7 this year. We're behind at halftime. We won every game that uh, you know we won this year, either ahead or tied at the half. And we've only been tied one time. So pretty good uh, front-running team this year. Scoring goes like this. Uh, Cedric Coleman, a field goal for two. Uh, Clint Normore uh, surprised us with two field goals for four. Aubrey Sherrod had five goals and a free throw for 11. And Xavier McDaniel had a typical Xavier first half. Six field goals, two free throws. For 14 points, that's half of his average. You know, that's what he's going to expect out there. He's three points from 2,000 career-wide. Mike Williams, a non-starter. Had a field goal and a free throw for three. Jim Les, two field goals for four. Percy Hawkins had five goals for ten. Boise winners, four goals and a free throw for nine. And missed three free throws. Bruce Mordini made both of his free throws for two points. The foul situation, our line, Coleman, Papke, one each. Two on Mc Xavier McDaniel, three on Carr, two on Les. Two on Powell, one on Bankston, one on Winters, and two on Mordini. 
Yeah, when uh, Bankson came in tonight, Joe, sometimes he's made contributions tonight. He was uh, all over the place and not much positive. No, he was a negative tonight, and it came at a time when Bradley thought they could rest Jimmy Les a little bit, up by two with the ball, and we quickly went down four and was playing catch-up since. And so, you know, Timmy has to get his game in order and clean it up more than anything else. He's got the tools. He just needs to know what he can do and what he can't do on the floor. And a goal, a big goal for Jim Les at the end of the half from the right wing because of the fact that Wichita got off a half-hearted shot and Bradley would get possession back. So all of a sudden you have a chance to cut it to one. Right. You know, that's going to be a big possession because uh, we have 15 minutes now to diagram a play, you know, to go inside or set up Boise with a shot and get some kind of shot, you know, to get us down one. And it's a brand new ball game. Turnovers in the first half. Ten for Wichita State. We have Bradley for six. Rebounds are close in the first half. We have unofficially X with the two, four, six. His average is 14, so he's right around there again. Right. That's probably close to what he got. Uh, he needed seven for a thousand in his career. And of course, he's uh, chasing a couple of people to become the first player in NCAA history to score two thousand to lead the, the country in scoring and rebounding. He's going after so many things, Dave, it's hard to keep up. But he's trying to become the first to lead the nation both scoring and rebounding. And of course, He'll become a first-round draft choice in June. Peoria Media were treated this uh, morning by Jim Erickson, Dr. Jim Erickson, and Athletic Director Ron Ferguson, Faculty Representative Ron Kapersky. The entire Peoria traveling party was there. And to hear uh, Ron Ferguson and Lil Perkins talk about, essentially, the Perkins plan for saving the Missouri Valley Conference. And I guess the bottom line, before we start commenting, is that the future of the Missouri Valley Conference rests solely in the hands of Bradley University and what it does. If Bradley stays, there'll be a valley. If they don't, there won't. There will not be one. That's right, David, at least after next year. Uh, Bradley is the king domino right now, and Wichita State is one of the few schools trying to make it uh, profitable and uh, attractive for Bradley to stay. And here is the Perkins plan, the A.D. Lou Perkins of Wichita State. Get your pencils and scorecards ready. He proposes that once West Texas is out of the league, and this is something that he thinks can be done as early as next year, is to bring in four schools from the South. Lamar University, Texas San Antonio, University of New Orleans, and Southwest Louisiana. All schools have either a good basketball tradition or a good media market to come out of. Lamar, of course, is tremendous basketball in Beaumont. Uh, New Orleans, of course, in the city of. Uh, Texas San Antonio won the top independence in the nation the last couple of years. Southwest Louisiana, ditto. Well, what happened then, you have a 12-team league with a north-south division of six teams each. In the north, you would have Drake, Indiana State, Southern, Bradley, Southern Illinois, and Illinois State. And I mean, Creighton, Southern, Drake, Illinois State, Indiana State, and Bradley. In the south, you would have Tulsa, Wichita, and the four new schools. And you would play everyone in your division twice a year and everyone outside your division once a year, rotating home and away. And so let me throw out a couple of things. Travel. What about travel? A travel would be okay in the north because you would be going to a lot of schools that you're busing to or an easy flight to right now. Des Moines, Terre Haute, Carbondale, you're busing down here. Uh, Illinois State, of course. Uh, Creighton is an easy flight. Uh, in, the, in the south, you're going to make those trips every other year. So it's really a wash. They're coming, you're going to meet three schools down there a year. Three schools are coming up to Peoria a year. It's, pretty, uh, it's a pretty good situation. Uh, wouldn't, now I'm trying to be devil's advocate right. here, wouldn't the Tulsa and Wichita teams have an advantage record-wise because of the other four teams they're playing with their basketball tradition not, not maybe as strong as some of the other teams? Uh, with the exception of Lamar, which is a tough place to go and win. Yeah, well, they could walk on the floor and win, David, but probably if the league was as strong as it was this year, they'd have a little bit of trouble, although they got to play each other twice and go down to New Orleans and Lamar and, uh, and new places that, you know, are, are, are fairly, uh, you know, unknown to them. You know, Southwest Louisiana, that's a great basketball tradition, so it wouldn't be a piece of cake, but you would think that the established schools would have the edge. The media market. A lot of people say that's the reason to go to the Midwest cities because you're in Indianapolis, you're in Detroit, 
you're in uh, Omaha, pa, 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 right okay. down the line. All right, yeah, they have the media markets in the Midwestern cities. The rapid and sad is that every one of those schools, Xavier, uh, Evansville, Loyola, are playing second or third banana behind either the pros or the top one or two college teams in those cities. DePaul, for instance, Northwestern. Uh, you have Indiana. Uh, you have uh, Cincinnati, of course, uh, overshadowing Xavier. They're not the top dogs in those media markets. They don't have as good a television uh, uh, network as we do in the Valley right now. And our Valley network, uh, both first time and SNI, would be enhanced because of the fact that we haven't talked about football will be dropped as a Valley sport. And we're going to concentrate on bringing basketball back as a number one sport, if it isn't right now, in the Missouri Valley. Yeah, how Salsa and Wichita are going to like that. They no problem. No problem. The independent. That's right. They would play independent schedules. They do not draw it home from Missouri Valley schools right now. They could uh, have the opportunity of bringing in better schools for football and make more money. They have already expressed, David, and this is a key point, they have already expressed both verbally and written that they are staying in the league. What a point if Bradley and Creighton do. So they're in. They're just waiting to see what Bradley does. Creighton's waiting to see what Bradley does. If Bradley goes, Creighton goes, Tulsa goes, Wichita State goes, and so goes the Valley. If Bradley stays, there's going to be some interesting developments. And uh, now, my opinion. Go right ahead. I think the Midwest Cities Conference would be a mistake for Bradley University. I like the plan we heard this morning. I think it enhances the Missouri Valley Conference. They're getting a, a few new schools. Certainly Lamar is now a name that's gained some national recognition. Uh, New Orleans, maybe you're not the top banana there, but besides the Saints, who is there? And uh, certainly as an alternative to uh, breaking and disbanding Illinois State Bradley for a league game, Tulsa Bradley, Wichita State Bradley, to me, and of course I don't know all of the academic factors involved and whatever, but I do know that in the addition of that for baseball and tennis, as was mentioned today, it would certainly be a strength, and I can't imagine it would be a hindrance for the women's program, so I like the plan. I would uh, hope that Bradley would uh, accept that and uh, remain in the Missouri Valley Conference where at least we have a name. The Midwest Cities has a name and people say, who are they? That's right. You know, their best team is Loyola and they don't have a home court to play on, David. Uh, they have an automatic first, but they're, gonna, they're never going to get two teams in the NCAA, even with 64 going. Uh, Oral Roberts is supposedly the second best team in that league this year, and they're under 500. So that's a, that's a league that's struggling. They talk about rivalries. They say, well, you can build new rivalries with a new league. The future is now at Bradley University. We have to build a civic arena. We have to put people in the seats. We can't wait four or five years to develop new rivalries. That is my opinion. And I'm not speaking on behalf of the university. Let's get that straight right now. It just uh, makes a whole lot of sense to me. You're listening to Bradley Basketball on WMBD Peoria, someplace special. So now that we've got all the editorial comments out of the way, we'll take a minute break and Joel will go down the official statistics for the first half. That finds Wichita State leading Bradley 31 to 28. Back in one, you're listening to Bradley Basketball on WMBD. Oh boy, I can't wait. What are you so excited about? My new kitchen. New kitchen? Come on, it looks the same. Now it does, but wait till you see it with my new cabinets. How can you afford new kitchen cabinets? UFS The Savings Center makes it all possible. In their home improvement department, they've got Marillette kitchen cabinets on sale. A New Horizon five-piece starter set for Marillette is just $269. All other kitchen cabinets at UFS are 50% off. That's half price. Plus this weekend, UFS is offering a special bonus of an additional 5% off. Isn't that great? Great. Oh, I almost forgot the best part. I can get my new kitchen cabinets now and not pay anything till May. And there's no charge for in-home estimates. So when are you going to pick out your new kitchen cabinets? Today. Mind if I tag along? Don't miss the savings on new kitchen cabinets, including a special price in Maryland's new Horizon design at UFS The Savings Center. UFS, where the savings are for real. 1800 Southwest Adams. Joey D, the statistics for the first half, under 50% from the field for Bradley. We've missed a couple of easy shots, but we're holding our own uh, in the ballgame. Pretty easy, just like the score, David. Bradley 12 of 26 in the field, 46%, and Wichita State 14 of 27, 52%. Bradley 4 of 8 from the line, Wichita 3 of 5. The rebounding goes to the Shockers. Uh, 15 to 13, not 17, 13 as it says on the sheet. The fouls are even at 8, and the assists are 11, 7 in favor of the Shockers. Turnovers, Wichita State 10, Bradley 6. Uh, the shooting went like this. Boise 4 of 8, Williams 1 of 4, Les 2 of 3, Hersey 5 of 9, and 
a tough lead around, rebounder is Boise with four. Tough rebounder on uh, the Xavier McDaniel. McDaniels is, uh, of course, the X-Man with seven. Six or seven from the field. He has 14 points. Aubrey Sherrod, five of eight for 11 points. Jim Les, five assists. Gives him 215 on the season. Three behind Brother Tom's mark. And seven behind Willie Scott's all-time record. One season mark of 222. Well, a couple times uh, we had the ball on the wings, Joe, in the first half, and Mike Williams just dominating, dominating uh, at, at his post position inside. All you got to do is get it, and he should be able to score, but he's not able to score. Well, the pass has got to be made quick. That pass has got to go to the wing and then two-handed into the post play because he's already posted up. Bruce Mordini just hesitated a couple of times at giving him that pass. Once he's got it and the defense has not adjusted, he's one-on-one -on, -one on the block, and that's what you want. 31 to 28 is the halftime score. Bradley will open the second half with the same lineup they opened the game with. Now they're throwing these little uh, balls like they do at uh, the field house. Speaking the field of house, the uh, Civic Center. Speaking of uh, starting lineup, Donald Powell played 10 minutes in a start, 0 for 1 from the field, and picked up two personals. Bruce Mordini played all of one minute in the first half, 0 of 1 from the field, 2 of 2 from the line, and had a rebound, two personals, and two points. What they've done, Joe, in the uh, statistics, they uh, made the wrong mark and gave uh, Kosich two, re uh, two fouls. He should have two rebounds and no fouls in the first half. All right, so rebounding is 17 13 in favor of the Shockers, which is pretty good on Bradley's side. Bradley in the second half will have its offense in front of the bench, which is the second game in a row on the road that that has happened. And uh, not in bad shape right now for the team. We'll see if uh, Henry Carr starts the second half for Wichita State. Oh, he probably will, and you know, try to you know, get some inside play besides McDaniel. I got to really, you got to really credit X in the first half because he was double, triple teamed and was still getting the ball and getting shots, and he made six out of seven. Henry will loosen a little bit of that up for him. Yeah, maybe if he gets the ball, X won't though. That's exactly right. That's what we got hope for. So you are really learning in this game, David. I, your progress as a sportscaster is on a thousand percent up in six years, in the last month, in the last month. Why is that? I don't know. Homework. She's doing all right. Pee Wee Summers is right in front of us. And uh, get okay. ready to work your second half. As the horn sounds. Pee well, Pee Wee's all over me. He loves to get on the good SIDs in the valley. That's, that's it, huh? Yeah. Our next broadcast, of course, is Bradley Basketball. will come from the Civic Center. Well, actually, I guess the way we should look at that is it's a, whole, it's a road game. The way the team has played thus far this year at home. So we'll be on the air with the Tony Baroni Show at 7.45. Following Dennis to talk about sports. Braves will have possession to open up the second half. And the weekly show with Tony will come Monday night. Well, when we left on this trip, we thought it was going to be, oh my goodness, and now with the three-point halftime deficit, we got a chance to win them both. There were two baskets from a sweep. Left of the basketball, looks up front, that lane is cut down, now Mordini comes out of the left-hand side. Left, fans are up of course, Boise posting inside, dribbles away from some trouble, now to left, 28 on the shot clock. Jim take a look to the right-hand side, Mordini up front, ooh, he had a shot, didn't take it, now leans in, fires it short, rebound tipped up and in by Donald Powell, thank you very much. Or was it winner? No, it was Powell, they said winner. Okay, it was Powell that got the field goal. It was announced as Boise. Here's McDaniel. Sherrod. Now Arline backs out. Bradley still in the zone. I believe they're in the zone, aren't they, Joe? Two, three. With it up top is Arline. Get a step, look to the right-hand side. There's McDaniel rolling that baseline. He's got it now in the corner right. Bounce pass to Coleman. 19-03 for the ball game. McDaniel, ball above his head. Somebody's sitting right in front of the shot clock. I can't see it, a photographer. Looks like 10 seconds to go in the shot clock. Push away from play on Donald Powell. Are they going to call two? They're going to call an intentional foul and send Henry Carr to the line. He threw an elbow. Uh, evidently elbowed him in the mouth, Joe, and they called it intentional. That's, that's the third on Donald. That'll put him at the line. Yeah, but it puts Carr at the line, so that's the silver lining in that. He'll get two free throws with a one-point Wichita lead. The shot clock, I think, went 10, but a photographer was right in front of the uh, shot clock, and Carr got smacked in the mouth. 
And he'll have the first of two here. Carr is 41% from the free throw line. He's a Mason. And he made the first free throw. I got a blocked cheer from the crowd where they know is wrecked. 32-30. Got to check out on the rebound here. Because percentages say there'll be one. Henry Carr, free throw, that's long. Bounces long into the corner. Mordini. That's what you call doing your homework. And here's Les trying to tie the game for Bradley. He's bumped by our line, and then there's Eck. And he, Jim retreats. Trying to step between two. Throws it off the leg of McDaniel out of bounds. That was a cat and mouse. Uh, pretty funny to the fans as Jimmy went full steam ahead to the free throw line and had a backtrack as fast. It's like one of those Tulsa things, you know, when they come, oh my goodness. Here's Les across the timeline again, trying to tie the game. First field goal went to Donald Powell on a rebound. In and out of the hands of Winters on the right. Boys, he's looking for a shot. He's going in the lane, lobs it up. Air ball, rebound taken down. Powell missed it. Rebound Powell again is up and blocked and fouled from behind, I think. Too bad. Donald Powell had an easy shot, wouldn't go. That's right. Should have made the layup. And they're going to call the foul on uh, Coleman, and it'll be two shots for Donald Powell. The DP will try to tie the game. He's 59% from the line. He mentioned this in Tulsa. You know, you like to see those layups go down because the free throws are never guaranteed. That's the second foul on Coleman. So we'll see how Donald fires the first one down. Trying to get it. Not a one-and-one. One. It's a two-shotter. His first one's up and in. Nice form on that one, Joe. 18-24. And with the clock stopped, Bradley will try to tie the game with Donald Powell shooting the second one. The Nawada freshman misses the second one. He was short. Didn't bend the knees enough that time. So the Shockers with a one-point lead will try to get their halftime marching back. Where's McDaniel? There he is. Skip pass, left-hand side. Coleman. Now our line up front. Might take a trip near the hash mark on the left. In the corner, entry pass, Carr. Puts it up, missed it, rebound to Boone, McDaniel, nobody checked him off the glass. Try to check him off, and that was Donald Powell, didn't do it. 34-31, the car, he made the initial shot, or took it anyway. That's nine rebounds for X, he's over a thousand. And the baseline to Hawk hangs, fires two, that was pretty easy. And here come the Shockers at the other end, 34-33, one point lead for him. X calls for the ball at the high post. Instead, they look for an entry pass. Now he bounces out, has it on the L left. Sherrod takes a dribble, two dribbles, three dribbles. Now he's on the left. They look for a lob. Coleman has it there. X comes out high. Looks at Sherrod, who posts up high, and then they roam to the right with our line. They look at Carr. Here's Coleman. Walk. Turn it over, and Bradley will get it with a chance to take the lead. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Collapsing zone that time. He saw it opening, but it wasn't there after one step. Didn't know what to do with the ball. And pressure will come at Bradley. The Hawk will inbound, and they'll line it up. They look for the inbound pass to left, and now he does. And he beats our line. Ooh, Jim almost got a push off. He says, come on, Pee Wee, get him off of it. Boise, he's got an open shot. Baseline left, fire it long. Rebound taken down Carr. Ball taken away by Mordini, and then X gets it back. There's Sherrod, right-hand side. Boise rushed that shot, didn't he, Joe? Right, here's an entry pass, Carr. In the lane, fake goes up. He's fouled, it goes! Yeah. And X gives him five. Wichita goes up three. That was a big possession for Bradley when they didn't get the shot down. They got it in the right hands, but Boise missed the shot. That's a third foul on Mordini. Both he and Powell now playing with three. Mike Williams on the bench, hasn't committed one. Carr will go for the three-point play. Try to give Wichita a four-point lead here with 16.55 for the ballgame. Now, we sat in a, a hotel room a couple of weeks ago and watched this team turn it over to Tulsa almost 35 times. We have not shown pressure yet this night, David. And we won't until the end, I imagine. Free throw is in as it rims in. There's your Bronx cheer again, Joe. 37-33. They look for an inbounds pass. They had Powell open on the right, and they found less on the left. Here's Jim, runs the ball in the front court, now stops. Gets it away to the Hawk, who lost momentarily, already had a jump shot. But they were all on Jimmy. Right-hand side, Mordini. Left screens for winners. Oh, they're not going to call a moving screen, are they? Yeah, they did. 37-33, and Wichita State will try to go up three, and Les is having some words now. It was a moving screen, Joe. It was a good call. Now, three players on the floor now with three fouls. And Wichita try to go up six again. That's a good, big defensive try for Bradley here. 
I think we're going to have an official time next dead ball, too. We'll see. Entry pass on the block card. Slice slotted out of there by Donald Powell. Into the hands of left from Hawk. Jimmy looks figure eight. 19-footer. Bounce it. No. Rebound tip long. Carr was on the back of winners. No call. Now Sherrod. That was a shot Jim should take. Here's X walking with it. Not this year, Xavier. Next year, yes. Bradley's got to get one down here. Can't afford to have too many defensive possessions down four. Yeah, they uh, had a chance to make it six twice now. One four offense. That's what they want to run, but we're not in that for sure. Mordini screens up high, left with the ball on the right. Now Jim looks to get a screen. His 22-footer is short. Air ball, rebound winner. Throws it off of Wichita Coleman and out of bounds. Now I have an official time. 15 54, and we needed this timeout, Joe. Right, we got to get a little bit more organized on the offense. Raves down four with the ball. When we come back in one, you're listening to Bradley Basketball on WMBD. This is the time of year to be thinking about an IRA, either a 1985 IRA or a 1984 IRA that you can open before you file your 1984 income tax return. Actually, you can do both. And the place for your tax-saving, good-earning IRA is Tallman Home Federal Savings in downtown Peoria and seven other convenient central Illinois locations. Your IRA at Tallman is insured for safety up to $100,000. So no matter what happens in the financial markets, you never lose a penny of its value. And Tallman Home IRAs steadily earn a good return at high competitive rates of interest. There is a wide range of IRA certificates available with your choice of terms. Remember, your IRA contribution is a deduction from your taxable income, so you save on taxes as you save for retirement. Ask about an IRA at any of the eight convenient Central Illinois offices of Tom and Home Federal Savings, member FSLIC, and committed to your financial future. Dave Snow, Joe D'Alfonso back, 37-33 Wichita. Bradley will have the ball heads up play by Boise as he knocked it off of Cedric Coleman. We haven't seen Jerry Thomas, Joe, and the reason is because he is ill. He came down ill yesterday, did not really shoot today in practice. Right, yeah, just sat around and watched the other team, uh, rest of the team shoot around. Uh, that pressure situation, David, I would like to see it uh, put a little scare in the Shockers here because they didn't handle it well against Tulsa. And even though we're not Tulsa, we can do some things full court. We need a goal here. Let's see what kind of shot we get. Hawk on the inbounds pass is trapped. Now back to left out front. Mordini calls for it on the right, but X just sags off him. Winters looks at the entry pass. Donald Powell turns, looks up top. Penetrates Hawkins. Now Powell, now left. 30 on the shot clock. Mordini. So whatever it was we wanted, we didn't get it. Here's left, left hand side. There's downstairs, Boise. Plant fires off the glass and it goes. It wanted to go out. Hawk flipped with the air for the rebound. It, there was none. Boise got a tough shot and made it. 37-35, 15, 22 in the shot clock. Will roll as McDaniels has it up top. Lobs it over to our line. And he'll run the offense. They've got a stack. They've got an overload left. McDaniel comes out there. They're going to reverse it now. The far line on the right. He fires a jumper and it goes. That's and it up four again. That's his first goal of the night. Five minutes gone in the second half. Hard to believe they ran by play for him. They stuck it down. Give credit to him. Here's Boise, entry pass, Hawk, his jumper is good. They post Boise, or uh, Hawkins down low, and he had a turnaround jumper in, 39-37. Braves hanging tough, 14-40 to play. Fire line, now McDaniel gets it from Coleman. Aubrey up front, inside McDaniel, put it on the floor, put it up, short, rebound tipped up and in by Carr. That's what can't happen, Joe. Right. Got to kick off. That's the number one thing you have to do. And here comes Mike Williams in. 14-20 to play. And he's going to come in for Donald Powell. they got to answer again. Mordini takes a step, doesn't shoot. Powell was tripped momentarily. Here's Winters in the left corner. Up top to left. Jim looks right. Wants Mordini to go to the baseline on the left. Instead, he's at the up the high post now. Winters with it. Entry pass Hawk. Put it on the floor. He's fouled before the shot. And uh, Coleman wants out of the game. Mike Williams is in. Donald Powell is out. 14.01 to play. Didn't like last trip down when Carr got in there. Papke going to come in for Wichita. Some words of encouragement from Tony Brony. You know, saying, nice job, but you got to check out. That's the second team foul. Coleman called to come out of the game, and Papke's in for him now. So Bradley will try to cut it to two again. 
They look for Mordini in the inbounds. Count is two and a half, and Winters has the pass. Steps now looks to the right. Rivals against McDaniel. Pulls up for a jumper. Good! Right in the face of Xavier McDaniel. 41-39. Braves staying tough. Here's our line. You keep close enough, you give yourself a chance at the end. Papke on the left wing. McDaniel up top. Do you want him? Now he'll roll down into operating territory. Our line. There's Sherrod. His jumper is good. Not much you can do about it, Joe. Boy, that was a two at him. That was a tough shot. 43-39. Once again, Bradley going to try to cut it to two. As Wichita has had the hammer and had that 4-2, four, 4-2 two, four, two point lead and answered every time. Here's Williams at the high post. Looks for a drop down. Now Mordini, left-hand side. Out front, left on the right. Entry pass down low is Winters. Takes a couple dribbles, goes in the lane, hangs, fires short. They're going to call a foul. Offensive foul on Winters. How many on him, Joe? Two. That's just a second, but not a very good call by Darrell Lewis. Try to protect the shooter a little bit. Fourth team foul. Yeah, that wasn't much of a foul right there. Now Wichita could go up six. And there's seven minutes gone. Great play, Jim Les. Oh, my goodness. Les got a hand in there, knocked it off. Pat King. They'll give it back to Wichita. That's the way it looks from here. Darrell Lewis 0 for 2 in the last 10 seconds. Papke's entry pass goes to Normore against the 2 3 zone. Now jumps the pass to Papke on the left. They cut our line back door. McDaniel lobs it now, Normore. 12.50 to play. McDaniel surrounded by four. Shiraz's jumper is off. High in the air for the rebound, hits the support. Bradley will get it back with a chance to cut it to two. Papke was 0 for 4 from the field in the first half, and Bradley uh, did not shade him that time on the defense. Good idea. Inbounds pass left, looks, and now Mordini gives back to Jim. We haven't had much transition ball here in the last two or three minutes. I think Bradley might have the advantage there. Here's Les, Winters, entry pass, Hawk down low, pulls up, and he's jump ball, it'll go to Wichita. He got up in the air, there wasn't much of a hell ball on that. Well, if that's the way it's going to be called, and we can be just as physical on the other side, and we should. I'll tell you. This is, as we mentioned, not a strong crew, and now their colors are coming out. And a technical foul on Dick Versace, way away. And now we'll go to the line with Sherrod. They're right in front of us here. Dick walks with Pee Wee Summers back to the bench. Well, so he had his ear all the way down. I'm talking about Brian Cook, couple of the big A. He had his ear all the way down and then said a magic word as he crossed midcourt and then he just said he was listening for it, David. He was really listening for it. He turned around and just beat him. Now there's your six point lead and it could be eight, Joe. And now we've got a big mountain to climb up. Well, that's what turned things around at Tulsa. Now you got to wonder if Sherrod or McDaniel are going to stick one here and we'll go down eight. Six point lead, big defensive stop here for Bradley. Carr way away from play. Papke looks for the entry pass there, Sherrod. Now Papke, let him shoot it. Throws a cross court pass to Normore. 25 seconds on the shot clock. They roll with Carr down on the right. Look for an entry pass, it's not there. Cross court pass, Papke. Eight minutes gone and he hits the shot. There's his first shot down, it's an eight point game. 11.55 to play. Now how can they stop the clock now? Well, the ball got away, and they found an opportunity to do it. I think it's the Bradley's, Bradley's advantage that we call timeout. 47-39, eight-point shocker lead. Four off the tee. Back in line, you're listening to Bradley Basketball on WMBD. Former All-Pro quarterback Roger Staubach is now a businessman, and he believes in TMC, the long-distance phone company. Business is a lot like football. If you make the right calls, you win. So when we went looking for a long-distance phone company to make our calls, we found that many were guilty of just too many costly penalties, like interference. Bill, Bill, we got a bad connection. I need to call you back. Then there's delay of game. Oh, busy again. I'm never going to get a line. And finally, clipping. Okay, now let me get this straight. Okay. The, the contract specifically has to say that... Dave? Hello? Penalties just move you backward. 
I went with TMC because I wanted my business moving forward. With TMC, you'll get quick access, outstanding quality, and you'll save up to 40% on your long-distance bills. So, MCI and Sprint, step aside. TMC has Central Illinois talking. Call TMC today. Dick Versace having more words with Pee Wee Summer during a timeout to 11.55. A lot of time, but you can't get blown out here. Oh, no, it's just four baskets down with it almost 12 minutes to go, David. That's not, but the pressure is mounting on the defense now to stop them almost every time down the court, and we haven't really done a good job recently on the defense. It's a kind of crowd. They're a good crowd, but uh, they also like to ride their team a little bit. Oh, sure. You get them on the run. We haven't used any pressure yet. Got to show it. Les looks for the inbounds pass and finally makes the hawk. And now back to Jim. Well, we need a score here to change the momentum. And cut the lead to six now. We were playing that 2-4-2-4 game. Les. Look to the left-hand side to Mordini. It rolls down low. Now it's Winters. To Mike inside. Put it on the floor. Charge. No doubt about that call. Well, there's his first foul. Just a bowl of kind of shot that time. Well, we come down and turn it over. Chance to make it a 10-point lead now. And this thing is like a stick of dynamite out there, ready to be lit. No more. Now Sherrod. Entry pass, Williams foul. There's two. That's a 16 foul. One of the few teams in the league, though, that you're not really in big danger if they get in a one-on-one -on -one real early. Yeah. Second on Williams, 16. Wichita shooting for a 10-point lead. Ali Oop McDaniel puts it up. He was foul. There's three. Now they'll go to line for two. Boy, he had all ball from the back, but he might have had the body from, uh, from also, David. That would have been a couple ball for Bradley play. There's Donald Powell in for Williams. And that's not a bad move at this point. Mike gets the booze from the crowd as McDaniel will try to make the lead 9 and 10. When Papke hit that jump shot, 0 for 5, was it? It was 0 for 5 coming in to that shot. They have to add some help here. Here's McDaniel's first one. That's it. And there's his point, Joe. I think that does it. Gives him 2,000. You're right. It's over 2,000. That's, I got him for 16. Oh, wait. I got him for 18 now. Maybe the crowd can't add. His second free throw is good. Gets both of them in, and Wichita's up nine. Wasn't it 41-39? It's worse. It's 10. 10 now. That's right. Here's Les. We need a score and how. Then they had one in a while. Here's Winters. Go to the free throw line. Kick it off Mordini. Look for the give and go to Boise. Didn't give it to him. Now Les. Normore's trailing him. Overload on the right. Boise pulls. Slow block. His jumper is up. It doesn't go, but a foul. Sherrod. 2-2. Two, two. On the hole, this will not be a shooting foul. That's the second foul on Sherrod to 14. 11 2 Bradley down 10. More yeah. bad news. Only a third team. Now, I can't read that scoreboard very well. It's all the way up here. Here's Mordini. Plants doesn't fire the shot. Now looks for less out front. And they're going to have to start firing. There's Winters in the lane, 12-footer. Bounces short. Rebound tipped once, twice. Now it's back out. Here come the shots. A full house break. Sherrod drop it off McDaniel to the baseline. Fire it too. Need a timeout. 51-39. to 39. The Shockers are about ready to blow us out here. Timeout for Emily. When they get the ball across the timeline. And now we get it. 10.34 to play. We had the 28 points at halftime. We got 39 now, and we've hit a bad streak. Back in one, you're listening to Bradley Basketball on WMBD. Ergonomics. Now, this word can be defined as the art and science of designing machinery to be comfortable and efficient for people to use. And every Volvo is engineered with this concept in mind. Solidity, durability, refinement, and safety. Every Volvo owner can take these for granted. And now you too have a great opportunity to take advantage of the Volvo's superb qualities. That's right. At Peoria Toyota Volvo, they're closing out the 1984 inventory of Volvos. It's the greatest selection ever. Over 30 are still in stock and all at fantastic low, low prices. So hurry on in while the selection is still available. 
Remember, they've got to clear out 1984 inventory, so prices have been slashed. Hurry on over to Peoria Toyota Volvo. Check out the excellent selection and save. Peoria Toyota Volvo, at the top of the hill on Knoxville. Doesn't take long, does it, Joe? Start with an explosive club like uh, Wichita State with two All-American candidates on it, doesn't. They put up a string. They're very confident around now on offense, David. They know right where the ball's going. They're putting it up strong. And the Braves have Williams in with Powell, Winters, Hawkins. Mordini's out of the game, and he really wasn't looking to score, David. So, you know, we got to get us uh, some more offense in the lineup. It's Carr, Normore. McDaniel, Pepke, and Sherrod for Wichita, and they're playing much more confident now. Bradley's got to show pressure pretty soon. 10.34 to go. Got to make a run here the next five minutes. We're going to make one. It's just a matter of how sustained and how much money we burn getting back in. Here's Hawk on the white, right wing, and he's trapped. He looks, steps in between, Boise to the baseline, drop it down, Williams. And what's the foul here? A car on uh, someone in a white shirt. I think they got it on Papke. And the second on Papke, fourth team foul at 10-26. And Mike Williams got a drop down pass. I thought Boise was going to take a shot. Here's Hawk on the inbound pass. Missed it. Come on, Boise winners. Follows it up and dunks it down, and we finally got off 41. 51-41, and they're sitting back at a 2-3 zone. Normore, bounce pass Sherrod. Takes a step, doesn't fire. Let's see if we can hold him one time. Two times. Three times. There's Carr. Ball is tipped by Hawkins, but Sherrod gets it. 30 seconds on the shot clock. Papke. Entry pass Carr. Surrounded by two. Papke. Now Normore is 20-footer. And he got it. Well, we're no start going. We're under 10 minutes now. 53-41. That's the shot you want him to take. 33% shooter on the year. Here's Les across the timeline with a left-hand dribble to the free throw line. Drop it into Powell. Off the glass too hard. Tipped it by Mike Williams. And there was a break. So we're going to the offensive board again. And putting it back down. 9.33 and a clock roll. We may not ever show pressure. Down 10. Normore with it. Left-hand side, Papke. Will they miss this time? When they miss, you got to watch where McDaniel is because you know he's going to be around it. Here's a lob to the goal. Up, down, up. It's blocked. The foul. Is it on Williams or Powell? And he'll go to the line with two. Three, four. Wait a minute, he signaled 34. The call on Voise is third. I don't know where Voise was in all of that. Evidently on the other side. And here goes McDaniel to the line again. That's all right. Uh, Voise can play with Powell. So Mike uh, has a little more difficulty doing that. Can't trade with him, Joe. Nope. Two shots for McDaniel. We'd even play two for one here if we could. X first one is up. That's bouncing in. The short to bounce back in. Got the basketball on WMBD Peoria someplace special. One more for McDaniel. He's got 22 on the night. His average is 27. And his second one is in. Can't play exchange here. Boise the inbound pass to left. 9.15 to play. Trying to cut the lead to 10 again. Jim between the rings, with Normore on him. Pass inside Mike Williams, put it on the floor, put it up short. Rebound taken down, in the hands of Sherrod. Just to kick it off does, Normore on the left. Sherrod was open for a jumper, and now Normore will bring it. Left-hand side he looks, he looks to the right-hand side now. There's Papke. Wichita playing pretty well, Joe. They use a lot of the shot clock, looking for the good shot. Papke, Sherrod, left-hand side, 23 on the shot clock, Papke takes a look, they're going to try to go up 14 here, Papke to the baseline, throws a bad pass, right hand to Donald Powell, now to left, Jim looks to run, waves everybody down, right-hand side, looks up top to the Hawk, and now to Winters, Boise rises and fires from 20, bounce away, no good, we're just throwing up the first available now, but it's almost time to do that, no more on the left, now they got a fresh set of 45, Papke with it. Braves need a win or drop back to 500 in the league. Our line going to come back in again. Normal on the right. X post down on the block. 27 seconds. There's McDaniel. Turn around. Jumper is it. Now it's 14 and we're about ready to get blown out. Eight minutes to go. 25 for X. Left to the left and now right hand dribble. Yeah, I wonder when we're going to show some pressure too. 
Boise inside Williams. Backs in, puts it up good. It looks so easy for him sometime, and now he retreat back and set in his own again. Well, we did, he didn't use the board either. You know, that truck could have bounced out. 57-45, 12-point lead again. No more to Papke. Need him to take it. Didn't take it. Todd was on him, but he didn't make the right decision. Uh, he's smarter than that. Here's Normore. Comes the direction of X on the block right. Normore looks. Bradley needs to stop and score to make it 10 again. Here's Carr. Put it on the floor. Off balance. Putting going to foul on Jim. They get Williams from behind, I think. That'll be free throw time again for Wichita State. Our line is in. Normore played pretty well. Is out. Third foul on the fourth foul on Williams. With 7.18 to play. Bradley really is not stopping them on defense. They're really doing what they want. And combining that with getting back on defense. They, we, we, Bradley cannot break tonight. Wichita State doing a good job getting back. Lincoln can play five on five. Well, here's the guy you want at the line. Carr for the first of a one and bonus. And his free throw is up and in. And they're just hitting everything tonight, Joe. He's three out of four from the line now. Wichita trying to go ahead of Illinois State again in the league, right? With a win? Correct. I wonder where those shirts are now back home. Free throw by Carr is up. That's bouncing off and a rebound. Who else? McDaniel in the corner. He missed it so bad that X got the lob or the higher board. Here's Carr inside. Shot blocked. Rebound goes long and it'll go to Wichita. 7-10 to play, new 45. Can't make a basket, can't get a rebound, can't get a break. 58-45. We haven't lost this game, Joe. Oh, no. Wichita has won it. So I think are uh, winning it. Uh, they played well, especially here in the second half. A little sluggish in the first half. Sherrod comes across the lane, going to corner on the left. Seven minutes to play. Here's Sherrod's jumper, short. Rebound bounced off. McDaniel is blocked. Get it on, rebound, put it back, lay it up and in. 15-point lead. With 6.45 to go. I think he misses some shots intentionally just to get the rebound. Here's Jim West, come to the right. Boise posts up high. Now to Williams down low. Goes to the lane, hangs, fires two. Wish he'd have done that a little earlier. 60 to 47, six and a half to play. No pressure. Back we set in the zone. No more on the left. They're right, we haven't even gone man to man. Papke, of course you got the shot clock working in your favor, but you gotta shut him down sometime. Ball's kicked out of bounds. That'll get Coleman in the game. Papke is out. Big for safe one. Time with 6.17 to go. If we don't see pressure now, Joe, we're not going to. We'll take a break. Be back in one. You're listening to Bradley Basketball on WMBD. We make it Showtime has more excitement in February. There's Shirley McLean in the national pay table exclusive premiere of Terms of Endearment with Jack Nicholson and Deborah Winger. And Shirley will recreate her Broadway show. It's an evening of song and dance exclusively for you on Showtime. There's more music with Lou Reed and Chaka Khan and Rock of the 80s. And there's movies like Lassiter starring Tom Selleck, Barbara Streisand's Yentl, and Michael Caine in Blame It on Rio. Fairy Tale Theater returns with the Three Little Pigs. And don't forget Family Time every weekday at 4 Eastern, 3 Central with movies, series, and specials for the whole family. John Biner has all new episodes of Bizarre, plus Gallagher's back. For all this excitement and more, it's Showtime in February. For the best in entertainment, it's Showtime Movies, Showtime Family Time, Showtime After Hours, Showtime on Broadway, Showtime Video, and more. There's something for everyone on Showtime. All UA cable systems, not just more choice, your choice. Call 686-2600. 617, Joe, not impossible, we're kindly unlikely. Well, it's just on not our day, it's Saturday. Bradley has lost on five consecutive Saturdays coming into the night, and looking at six, because there's 13 points right now, and that's a big deficit when you're on the road. And next Saturday, Illinois State. It'll be loud and rowdy, won't it? Yeah, it's senior day. We're going to honor Boise before the game and have some more surprises. What about Pierre Cooper, Joe? Is there anything planned for him? This would have been his senior year. Uh, I don't think Pierre is, uh, I'm not speaking for him, but I don't think he's going to uh, elect to be part of the ceremony. Okay. Inbounds pass, our line. The Braves, Donald Powell goes down. They're man-to-man -man now, Joe, for the first time, and winners foul. Oh, they, they got X on a push-off. I know, a moving block, moving screen. Well, he gets the foul. 6-12 to go. How about that? We go to man-to-man, -man and we get a turnover. 
It's not the most surprising thing against this team. Well, here comes the inbounds pass. Got to score every time. Got to almost play a shutout here. We're coming up on as much time as an overtime. Maybe Mike Williams for a three-point play. We'll see. Down 13. Left of the ball on the left. In it goes to Williams. Put it on the floor. Turns. Hangs. Fires. Dribble it. No. Rebound Powell was on the back of McDaniel. And then the pass is knocked away. But Coleman is there. Mike Williams just can't get anything. Well, he's got a couple of them down, but he's not going to do it with any consistency. Bradley playing a man-to-man -man for the first time. We'll pick up some fouls here. Here's Sherrod. Trying to get this to McDaniel. His baseline jumper. Missed it. Rebound Williams. Ball taken away by Carr. Now left. Carr goes solid. Jim runs the floor. Looks to the right. Come to the right. Crowd up in arms here. They didn't like the way Mike handled him. He goes to the baseline. Fires it up. Missed it badly. Rebound taken down McDaniel. He steps between two. And is running into front court. And he throws it away. And boys, it's uh, Hawkins knocking the ball out of bounds. 11 to play. Good job on Boyce. The winner is the last time down to McDaniel. Those two are going to war right now to two seniors. It's really fun to watch. 5-11 to play in the game. Bradley down 13. Something is thrown on the floor. The official knocks it away. Wichita's got a fresh 45 and they're down to 40. And Papke's going to come in. And so is Coleman going to come in. Here's a jumper, Sherrod. Long. And it bounces into the hands of Mike Williams. Five minutes to play. Here comes left. Well, we better start pressuring if we make one. Here's Les, looks at Boise. Mike Williams up top. Now Les, winners, he threw it away. Pass a little too deep for Boise that time. He had posted up, his feet were set. Got Dick Versace yelling at Jim, and he wants to, to put the pressure on the ball. They're going to run 1-4. Well, it's not going to make any difference if we're 15 behind, is it? 4.45 to play. Wichita going to get a W tonight here, it looks like. The Braves will split the trip. Now here's Papke in the lane, drive scores. They're up 15 again. That matches the biggest lead with four and a half to play. Left with a left hand, right hand dribble across the timeline. Now Jim comes down to the free throw line and he's fouled. Mike Williams don't sit, hangs on the rim. Still not in the 1-1. 422 to play, 62-47. Well, Joe, you, you said you'd have got a split on the trip. You'd have thought of any other way around. Right, and, uh, and you would have been happy. And sometimes you get greedy. It's, yeah, it's something it's about the same way could be. It's something about that, you know, getting that first one. Uh-oh, we have pushing away from play. Pee Wee Summers. Oh, he's calling a foul with a dead ball on a push-off. That's two shots because it's happening in a dead one ball point. situation. Not two, that's right. Here comes our line. The foul was called on Normore. His second, 422 to go. And he comes right out of the game. Gene didn't like that much, did he? Boise to the line. How many points for the senior, Joe? All right. Uh, he's got 15. His average is 22. Has six this half. He's missed some free throws tonight. His first one is up, and it's in. Gets us off 47. Been there for a while. 14-point lead. Dick's first year, Bradley had a big lead, and it whittled away against Wichita. Remember that game at the field house? Second free throw is good. And we've got some pressure for the first time. Here's Papke. Donald Powell, now McDaniel. Looks, looks for a guard. He's going to bring it up himself. 4.17 to go. Les looks at the trap. Now comes back. Our line has it. 4.10 to go. 62 to 49. A 13-point Wichita lead. Our line with it. Now Papke. Corner on the right. Couple dribbles with the left hand. Sherrod looks to shoot. Now Arline penetrate. Put it up. Too hard. Rebound McDaniel. Up, down, up. In. Foul. Rebound Carr. Hits up. It misses. He's fouled. Williams fouls out. With 3.53. And the crowd is going to love this. As they say goodbye to Big Mike Williams. Dick for Chase on the bank. Asking Jerry Thomas, can you play? And that's who's coming in. As JT makes his first appearance, he'll only have to play three minutes and 53 seconds. Car to the free throw line with two coming up here. Couldn't believe McDaniel missed that shot. You can almost knock him in automatically from there. Right. Mike fouls out with nine points. And was basically ineffective. 
And that is... Most ends of the floor. The ninth time this year he's fouled out a 25 game. Car spray throw coming up here. He made it. 63 to 49 at the 14 point lead. He's four of six in the line. The two he missed have bounced to half court. Free throw number two for Henry Carr. He made that one. And a 15 point lead again. 350 to go. It was a three point game at the half. And we played with him for a while, but got stuck. Here's Hawk moving at the other end in the lane off the glass. Good. Got a move for the freshman. His eighth field goal. He's got 16. That's as many as well, winners had, what, 17 after he made the free throw, 17, 18? Right. Here's our line. 64, 51, 13 point shocker lead. McDaniel missed it. Rebound high in the air is taken out by Hawkins. And he rebounds and gets a foul. That's a real late whistle. Fouls on Hawkins, you know that. Yeah, that's what I said. That's what I meant anyway. That's an incredible call. He got the rebound and they called over the back. And Pee Wee Summers called that one. I can't believe it. The rebound went to Hawkins and he was ready to run the break and he got called for the foul. Sherrod to the Lions, so he can notch two up here most likely. 64-51. Bradley will go to 0-8 in games they've trailed at the half. Free throws up and good. Southern Illinois is next up. On Thursday, we'll go to 14-11. I think if we win the last two, Joe, and can get one in the league, we might still have an NIT shot. We'll see. Free throw number two, Sherrod is up and good. And a 15-point lead. That's been the biggest. And with 3.20, here comes West. Across the timeline with a left and a right-hand dribble. Come to the left is Winters. He plants and fires from 20. In and out and in. Well, when you're good, you get those down. 19 for Royce. 66-53. 13-point lead again. There's a bad pass. In and out. And McDaniel gets it back against Donald Powell. Missed it. Got a rebound. Goes up. Scores. It goes. The ball is spiked by Donald Powell. McDaniel another rebound. I tell you. Well, the best thing about it was that they turned it over right in Donald's hands and he didn't hold on to it. Darrell Lewis, who is one of the officials, in my opinion, Joe, is one of the worst in the league. And I'm not, you know, I'm not picking on his crew particularly, but he is just awful. Well, we, we know it wasn't a strong crew coming in. They proved the point once again. I mean, he is just not a strong official. And it has nothing to do with the game, of course. But he just, I think he's a fan's official. Free throw is missed by McDaniel, so he gets the rebound and dribbles it. No, rebounds to the hands of left this time. 68-53, still a 15-point lead. Here's the Boise jump line, jump shot from the right, right baseline goes in. Got an 18-footer. 68-55, 2.45 to play. And it's Sherrod, right hand side is jumper, missed it. Rebound high in the air is Winters and a foul. Daniel tries to rebound about everything, and he gets his hands on almost everything. 2.40 to go, 13-point lead, stops the clock, could be 11 at the other end, and Winters will shoot free throw. And four fouls on the X-Man. You know, and I'm not, as far as Lewis is concerned, I'd, I'd tell it to his face. I mean, I'm not talking behind his back or anything. Wichita State wants time, we'll hold it right here. 2.40 to go in the ballgame, 68-55. Well, Bradley, you know, has has some talent. We, we've known that. Uh, yeah. Having some of the harness is another thing. You know, Mike Williams underneath, Tim Bankston, you know, running the floor. It's, uh, those kind of talents have got to be harnessed to, to make a good thing for Bradley. Um, 421, we don't show pressure to 421 in the game. We're down 15. I think that's a long time to go before pulling a trump card like that. And we've seen what Wichita State can do under pressure like that against other teams. Illinois State, Tulsa, for example, they can't handle it very well with that inexperienced backcourt. Yet, that's something that, you know, we didn't care to go too late. 2.40 to go. The Tony Baroni Show coming up following the game. So Wichita State will be in a situation where if they can beat Tulsa, they can set up a coin flip situation. Wichita will go to 11 and 4. Tulsa will go to 11 and 3 with a win over Drake tonight. We haven't got a score on it. That's one thing they don't do very well here at Wichita is get a score. And Bradley will drop back to 7 and 7. And now we'll need help from uh, Drake next week to have a shot still at a home game in the first round. 
I think Wichita's played pretty well in the second half, Joe. About as, about as well as I've seen them. Right, they're organized. They played really good defense. They got back, David, not letting us run like we tried to do in the first half and did some successfully, as a matter of fact. Winners will go to the line with a one and bonus situation. 2.40 to go, and the game is probably gone, but with some butchers that they've got shooting free throws, you never know. Free throw by Winners is up and good. The problem is the butchers are hitting them tonight. That's right, Henry Carr, 5 of 7 from the line. Free throw number 2, Winners coming up here. This will give Boise 20, right? Made the second one. McDaniel to inbound, there's the pressure. Inbounds pass to Papke. Donald Powell traps. The ball is thrown into McDaniel, or uh, to Sherrod. Our line at the other end leads to McDaniel. Lay it up and get it. Like I said, I'm sure glad we didn't trap earlier. 70 to 57. 13 point lead again. They made that one look easy. They hit the right man though. Here's less of the lane, his jumper is good. 70 59, 11 point lead. And Jim West still trying to cut it down. Dick Versace says, get up on him. Makes a steal. Jim steals, lays it up, and missed it. Got his own rebound, puts this one up too hard. Rebound Hawk. He tips into the hands of our line. Jim missed a wide open layup after he made a fine steal. Here's McDaniel, put it up, missed it. Rebound car tips it in. That's too bad. Jim just rushed his shot, pretty embarrassing, but then missed it again. After he'd hit it, pretty nice shot. Here's Hawk at the other end, fire an air ball. McDaniel rebounds, and he is fouled by Withers. And someone with the good hands on press throw. Thank you very much, Joe. One-handed. I always was better going to my right. Fourth foul on Winters. McDaniel's really starting to pile up the rebounds now in the game. He's, I bet he gets 20. Well, that's one way to get some shots and, uh, and then put them right back up. That's one way to get 14 a game is to play 39 minutes of ball game no matter what the score is. And uh, I don't blame him for leaving him in there because he has the chance to do something no one else has ever done. 140 to go, 72-59. I don't either. People pay to watch this guy play. He missed the free throw. And a rebound taken down to Braves. A minute 35 and it'll be over. Jim directing traffic goes to Boise. He'll go to the baseline and put it right next to his face again. Missed it. Weak side board Jerry Thomas. Backs in. Takes a look. Now leads to Donald Powell. His baseline jumper short. Rebound. There's another one for McDaniel. And a foul on winners. If he wanted bonus, that's five for Boise. And he leaves and gets a handshake for Dick Versace as he goes to the other end. Joe, there's not much more Boise could have done tonight. He played his game. And he leaves with 23 points. We'll beat a fairly leading rebounder once again. Bankston will come in. A minute 22 to go, and X will go back to the line. So the game's no longer in doubt, so why don't we just sit back and watch X play? See how many he can get. He got his career high of 43 until he got another career high of 44. He's got 31 so far. And he had, what, 14 and a half time? Right. Free throw is up and dribbles in. That's 32. He's in that the scoring race with Dan Palabizio of Ball State. Right. Who played against Bradley in the NIT Finals in 82. But their day and night difference between Palabizio and McDaniel. Free throw number two is good. Because X will be a pro. Palabizio will have to look back at his scrapbook. Here's Les. He takes the jumper, fall away, missed it. Rebound, Hawk, crashes the board, put it up, missed the layup, tried to tip it, no good. Rebound, McDaniel is pushed out of bounds by Jerry Thomas. I'll tell you what, Hawk will try to rebound with anybody. He's doing it with the best in the country tonight, coming up short there. I think uh, Henry Carr may have gotten nailed in the groin right there. So it's just too bad that we missed a couple of layups in the last uh, minute and a half, David, because, you know, that just makes the score a little bit more respectable. Sosich is going to come in, and that's the most proper substitution I've ever seen. Sosich comes in for Carr. He played pretty well tonight when he was in there. I'm surprised he didn't give his middle name. He says, I'm Tom Kosich, number double zero. I'm from Illinois, from County Med City, and I'm coming in for number 53, Henry Carr. Well, McDaniel's got what, Joe, 32? 33. 33. 
And he'll try to get his number here with the first one, which will be retired in another minute 09. And he did. 34 for 34. And 75-59, not really indicative of the whole game. Rick Jones is going to come in for Bradley. Jerome Child is going to come in for Bradley. He missed the second free throw and did not get his rebound. Hawk got it. Now to left. Give it a front court. That'll make it look a little better. Here's Hawk in the lane. Scoop it up. It's pinned to the board. The foul out front. Well, it'll be Jerome Child. Top of Smurf comes in. Replacing Jim West. Len Bertolini will come in for Hersey Hawkins. Les comes out. Powell comes out. I'd sure like to come back here and play them again one more time, Joe. I think we could get this team sooner or later. Well, we couldn't have come in at a better time after the big emotional victory and how well we played Thursday night. I just didn't get it done in a couple of spurts tonight. You know, we talked about this, David. This is a team that has played in some in, in most of the games 33 good minutes of basketball. But those other seven got us in big trouble. Bach makes the first free throw. Len Bertolini will come in for him with the dead ball. A minute one to go. Braves finally get off that 59 again. 75 to 60. Well, it's uh, Smithson yelling at Lewis for now down there. Free throw number two. Hawk is in and he's out. Well, the Hawk couldn't have done too much more tonight, Joe. Well, he had 18 points. Played well. Probably had a bunch of fours. Played his heart out as usual. X baseball pass to Pepke. Touchdown. And he's fouled by Jerry Thomas. 59 seconds to go and two free throws coming up. 75-61. Just as long as that minute was the other night against Tulsa. It's longer tonight. Now, and there's another move by our freshman. If Jerry would have turned around when Papke turned around and saw the ball, he may have been able to bat away. It was a little bit behind Carl. So Bradley will go to 7-7 seven and seven in the league. Those losses to Indiana State are still going to wind up making a difference to our season. We just shouldn't have lost either one of those. Well, Rachel Papke's up and in and out. Indiana State at home tonight should win. They'll go to 6-8 and eight in the league. Only one game behind Bradley. And that's an important spot right there. Free throw, Papke is up, missed both of them. Or made the first and missed the second. 75 to 61. Jerome Childs leads for Bankston. This ought to be fun. Watch this group. Bankston hangs, fires, missed it. Thomas tries to rebound, knocked out of bounds. It'll go to Bradley. Well, who's gonna get the who's gonna get the two out of this bunch? Maybe you. Jerry Thomas, his flat shot, air ball, rebound, Bertolini goes for it, misses it. Papke trips over the official. The other end here is Kosich, his jumper misses. Rebound, X tries to tip. And it's fought finally away by Banks at 33 seconds to go. The Whirling Dervish around one, and now he's got McDaniel with him. Down the lane, stops, looks inside. Bertolini trying to get a field goal. Does! 44, Bertolini with a hoop. His third field goal of the year. Goes for the steal, 17-16. The 12-point ball game, Bertolini falls to Rod. 15 seconds to go. We had bodies all over the floor there in the last possession by Wichita State. He had Papke in front of us here. McDaniel on the free throw line down there. And Kosick ringing one up from uh, 20. Well, who's this coming in? Long, tall Curtis Bailey out of Birmingham. 6'9", 180-pound freshman. And they're going to give excellent ovation here. Richly deserves, of course. How about a little bit of theater? Look at Dick for sake. Dick Versace comes all the way to the other end of the floor and shakes the hand of Xavier McDaniel, and that was a class move. Free throw is missed. Rebound taken down Greg Jones. Now to Childs, to Jerry Thomas, who walks and fires. He tried it again, and this time he got it down. 75-65. It's going to be a 10-point ball game. Papa Smurf goes for the steal. Doesn't get it. Our line. That's the ball game. 75-65, Wichita wins by 10 in a game they won in the second half. And the handshakes with Dick Versace and Gene Smithson, Randy Smithson. And Wichita wins the big one. They still are alive for first place in the league if they can go down and win at Tulsa, which I don't think they can do. We're going to have a ceremony coming up here in just a minute to retire Xavier McDaniel's uniform. 75-65, Wichita State wins. The Braves split the road trip. And if it had been the other way around, you'd have felt real good. And I guess that's the way we still should look at it. Our game sponsors will be back with a Tony Baroni show in a minute. You're listening to Bradley Basketball on WMBD. 